Hello and welcome to Russians with Attitude. Today we are gonna talk about a Russian philosopher, journalist and a godfather of Russian nationalism, Mikhail Menshikov. Russian conservative ideology at that time in the early 20th century was sitting back, drinking coffee and uh, discussing whether we should take Constantinople or Korea first. But Menshikov uh, was kind of a guy who was very inward in his uh, nationalism. He wanted to reform Russia according to nationalist principles. So Mikhail Menchikov, uh, you've probably never heard of him, which is uh, very strange because he was the most famous journalist in the late Russian Empire and the most uh, well-paid journalist and uh, very productive journalist. Says a lot about journalism. Yes, uh, Sergei Vite asked Menchikov to write the Russian constitution Lev Tolstoy was a great uh, fan of Menchikov and he was personally friends with Liskov and Chekhov and the emperor himself uh, read his articles. Yeah, but it doesn't uh, transfer to the popularity in Russia today, not in the slightest. Uh, for Russians, for modern Russians, uh, uncovering history, uh, even of late uh, 19th century, early 20th century, is like uncovering some bizarre civilization that we have uh, no part of. Yes, exactly. He advocated for a kind of nationalism that was different from the official imperial ideology. He was lamenting how much the Russian Empire was doing for foreigners. He was lamenting how many Germans there are. He was quite far from the what is usually regarded as the far right in Russia is as the Black Hundreds, the monarchists, uh, anti-Jewish, anti-socialist movement that was uh, actually supported by the state in some ways. And Menchikov was one of the founders of the All-Russian National Union. Yes, so the paper Nova Vreme didn't have a good reputation. Because on the one hand, it was the greatest, the biggest newspaper of the European type. Like uh, it had uh, news from Europe and from all around the world. Uh, it had like ads from all the big companies and so on. So it was a classical European Western newspaper. So, but at the same time, uh, it had a very bad reputation among liberals uh, because they saw it as a kind of submissive, reactionary newspaper that was just printing whatever the Tsar wanted it to print and uh, Nova Vremenets, uh, so kind of a guy who reads Nova Vreme, it was kind of an insult among liberals. So, I don't know, kind of like Fox News viewer among modern American liberals. Kremlin bot, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So the Russian Empire, it was not organized like a modern centralized state. You had, uh, they didn't have the same laws for everyone. Uh, there were lots of territories where different laws were in power. Uh, for example, in the Caucasus, uh, which had a kind of military administration, the Namestnichstva, um, Poland, of course, Congress Poland, uh, Finland, the Baltic uh, region, they had all their own uh, laws, even parliaments, policies, governments. And the nationalists wanted to remove all of this. They wanted to turn Russia into a unitarian state, uh, which uh, in their mind would help assimilate the foreigners and break their political power. Uh, rhetorical points of Menchikov, he always complained about the Germans and how many of them there were and how they controlled the economy and so on, the German dominance. In this way, it's a bit hard to understand the nationalism of Menchikov because his nationalism was not about like Georgian tangerine sellers in Moscow, as it is today, or mm. Tajik uh, guest workers. Uh, his nationalism was about like Swedes and Germans and Polish officers in the army and uh, German bureaucrats and so on. Um, of course, then you had the American factor, especially in the early 20th century. I think Menchikov was even uh, mentioned in the New York Times back then as a vile, right. as a vile anti-Semite. Right. Some Jewish American banker talked about Russia. New York Sun of uh, 31st March 1912. Any urging the Jews of America to raise a fund with which to send soldiers of fortune to Russia and to smuggle arms into that country to stir the fighting blood of the Russian Jews 
the cowardly Russia, which was made to kneel to the little Jap, will be made to kneel again to God's chosen people. The Jews of the whole world are declaring war against Russia. Like the Roman Catholic Church, the Jewish community is a racial, religious fraternity which, without possessing political organs, can discharge important political functions. And this state has now excommunicated the Tsardom. For the great northern Slav race, there is to be no more Jewish money, nor Jewish sympathy, and Russia is slowly awakening to the meaning of this warfare. Uh -huh. This is a speech of Herman Lyob, American director of supplies, and the Menshikov was not having it. Yes. What and... was the point? What was the reason of uh, this um, spurring out by this uh, Herman Lyob? Well, officially, like uh, the reason were the pogroms. Right, right, sure. The, the, the pogroms on uh, Kishinev and so on and Ukraine of uh, after 1905. Of course, uh, that was things happened very much differently than they are uh, described. And uh, in the same newspapers, they were talking about uh, arming Jewish self defense groups. Yeah. And um, if you read some of the memoirs uh, of the pogroms, it's. Uh, Turns out quite interesting that uh, uh, the Jewish self-defense groups in uh, Kishinev and Odessa, they had machine guns and uh, grenades, while the evil um, Black Hundred government-sponsored Cossack death squads uh, had nothing, uh, like just sticks and stones. So that's quite interesting. It's a great question of who was pogroming whom. But uh, this was more or less the reason why Russian-American relations, which had been excellent up until that time, I mean, basically since 1776, uh, when Catherine the Great helped uh, create the United States, uh, or when during the American Civil War, when uh, the Russian Navy basically guaranteed that uh, the British would not involve themselves, or later during the Crimean or earlier, during the Crimean War, when America was uh, helping Russia break the embargoes and the blockades. So but it took a couple of members of Jewish diaspora to spoil all those great relations. I mean, I do, have, I, do, I do have a, a conspiracy theory that the whole anti-Russian turn in American media that changed public opinion and uh, foreign policy in America was kind of a British psyop to destroy Russian-American relations. It's possible, I, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, the whole Russian-Japanese uh, war and uh, American involvement, it was uh, very out of nowhere. All of a sudden, we are enemies now. So, basically, Menchikov was feeling all of this. He was feeling the pressure on the Russian government. And uh, what he felt was that decisive action was needed to stop the catastrophe. He felt that the catastrophe was coming, while many others did not. I am one of the Russian prophets, in the manner of Jeremiah, who predicted the destruction of Judea and waited for his predictions. Many of my premonitions were fulfilled with remarkable accuracy, even the year of the war. 1914 was predicted in August 1912. So, yes, very humble person too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, I think, I think it's actually quite ironic how everything turned out. Menshikov was uh, raging against the regressive backward Black Hundreds who were talking about the Jews yeah. and he was complaining about the Germans and German dominance. Sweet. And then <laughs> one day German dominance ended and uh, three guys called Jakobson, Davidson and Gilfond came and shot him in front of his children. And this is where the free segment of our podcast ends. Free yourself from tedious American monoculture and subscribe to Russians with Attitude. Thank you.